2019 Audi Q8 First Drive Review, Style and Substance Weight in the Balance. San Pedro de Atacama, Chile, choice is good, even when some of those choices seem to make no sense at all on paper. For 2019, Audi will offer its brand new Q8, yet another choice for personal luxury buyers looking for a sporty crossover. Considering the success of coupe-shaped utility vehicles like the BMW X6 and Mercedes-Benz GLE, despite the fact that they almost completely lose the utility aspect of a so-called sport utility vehicle, it's surprising that it took Audi so long to pen an entry into the segment. And the Audi Q8, unlike its competitors, keeps a mostly flat roofline, which means buyers won't have to sacrifice as much of the utility part of the sport utility equation. But what about the sport aspect of this SUV? Audi representatives cite the Land Rover Range Rover Sport as a potential rival for its new Q8. Considering that Land Rover has found around 20,000 buyers for the Sport in each of the past three years, that's not a bad bogey for Audi to target. All of the Q8's competitors are more about keeping up appearances than blitzing the race track but it's obvious that a sporty, stylish take on the SUV formula resonates with buyers in America. So it makes sense in today's market to offer the Q8, even though it's not really very sporty, and has less utility than the related Q7. Part of the rationale is that in this segment, styling is of utmost importance. Audi designers drew inspiration for the Q8 from the original Quattro Coupe from the 1980s, the styling link is most apparent in the form of blistered fender arches at all four corners. These blisters bulge out over optional 22-inch wheels, 19s are standard, and give the Q8 a muscular stance that's reinforced by the vehicle's imposing width. The Q8 is 2.6 inches shorter than the Q7, but basically shares the same wheelbase. Its roof is also about an inch and a half lower to the ground which again helps emphasize the vehicle's 79-inch width, which is over an inch wider than the Q7. At the rear, a long, horizontal, blacked-out panel separates intricate taillights and also harkens back to the old Quattro. And as long as it's wearing a monotone palette, we think the Q8 looks awfully nice in person. But it doesn't really ooze style the same way as the X6 and GLE Coupe. European Q8 buyers who choose Audi's S-Line trim level will get a unique set of grey exterior accents, including a sort of mask around the Q8's massive octagonal grille. It's not yet clear if this two-tone scheme will come to America, but even if it does, our advice is to skip it. Instead of offering a more premium look, we think the grey accents cheapen the looks of the Q8 in the same way a stripped-down base model economy car is cheapened by unpainted plastic bumpers. Check out the video below to see what we mean. There's an overall sense of sci-fi meets modern technology inside the Q8. Large swaths of shiny black plastic adorn the Q8's interior. These look like modern interpretations of the panels used in the Star Trek, the next generation television series. Two stacked LCD touchscreen panels make up the center of the dash. These screens offer haptic feedback meaning they produce the sensation of a physical click to confirm virtual button presses, which helps make them feel a bit more like traditional buttons and dials. The Audi Q8 interior represents the future of sci-fi past come to life, and thankfully it all works pretty darn well in the real world. The bottom LCD screen is positioned to fall right at the driver's fingers, assuming his or her hand is resting atop the shifter. It's from this lower panel that the car's climate functions are accessed. In the case of the Q8, there are four individual climate zones, one for the driver, one for the passenger, and two for the rear seating area, but it's also a panel that can recognize handwriting for navigation inputs. An upper panel measuring 10.1 inches across is the main display of the Q8's MMI experience. Maps, audio, and other infotainment features display on this panel, which is also touch sensitive. One unique feature that makes MMI much more user friendly than some competing systems are shortcut icons that can be added in a row across the lower LCD panel. These shortcuts can include anything from a frequently used GPS destination to the phone number of a friend or a family member. 
we found the system mostly intuitive to use, once we figured out that a solid press was required to make selections and get any helpful haptic feedback. One major limitation of Audi's MMI technology, and this applies to any infotainment system that requires a strong connection to the internet, is that many of its most useful features didn't work out in the Atacama Desert where we traveled to test the Q8. This being the case, we couldn't really test Audi's natural language voice control. In theory, you can get updates on the weather, or even tell the system that you're hungry, which would prompt the system to give you suggestions for nearby restaurants. Of course, if your driving is mostly confined to more developed areas, and it very likely will be, you'll enjoy all the benefits of MMI. Audi's virtual cockpit technology is standard in the Q8. Instead of a traditional gauge cluster, the digital dashboard is configurable to show all kinds of useful information, our favorite being a big, bright map with GPS driving directions. An optional head-up display further reduces the need for the driver to move their eyes from the road. 